This is the story of Sabina. Sabina is much like me. We are both mothers who work hard taking care of our families. But there's one big difference between Sabina and me. Since the age of seven, Sabina has gone to the river nearly every day to fetch water. I stayed with Sabina for 24 hours to watch how she used her time and how she used water. I watched as her day began at sunrise. And throughout the day as she cared for her husband Jacob, a farmer who raises livestock. I watched as she mothered her children, including her new baby. I saw how water was part of every aspect of Sabina's day and how if she wasn't using water, she was walking to get it. A four-mile round-trip walk to a dirty river where she scoops water from a hole twice a day with her best friend, Christina. And I realized I couldn't truly understand what it was like to walk in Sabina's shoes unless I did it myself. It's not heavy now. No, it's light right now. Maybe later it will be very heavy. This fence is just one of the many obstacles that the women face as they're going to the river. <laughs> the other obstacles are thorns are everywhere. They're above us, they're below us. You step on thorns, my hair gets caught in thorns. And the water itself is an obstacle. It's an obstacle to a girl's future because they have to get water all the time. They're not getting education. They're going to the river. Look, there's what? There's a container there. Oh, yeah, it's full. So somebody got water. It looks like somebody got water from here. Yeah, it is. That thing is full. Water is not just scarce here. It's really, really yucky. People come to the water source we're right next to just because it's so much easier to get water from here than to go all the way to the river. But this kind of water is just a breeding ground for typhoid and cholera and waterborne diseases that cause diarrhea. In fact, just last night, Sabina and Jacob had to take the baby to the health clinic. She had fever and then she vomited and had diarrhea every 10 minutes. She had to have an IV for 24 hours. Okay. I got I have a rock in my shoe. The closer the closer I get to the river, the more nervous I get because I don't know if I'm going to be able to carry this water. This could be extremely embarrassing. Okay. And there's loud. Oh my goodness. We just got the go-ahead to the river. Mary ran ahead to warn the women who are bathing there. Here goes nothing. It's 10 after 3. We left at 10 after 2. It's taken us an hour to get here. The water is today a bit browner than the other day we were here. So we need to scoop another hole to get water. Okay, you show me and I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. It looks pretty brown. Mm. Make the hole bigger with our hands. Mm. It still looks pretty brown. Okay, so now we're just getting this dirty water out of the hole that we dug. Oopsie, we, we had a little landfill incident here. <laughs> Oh, sorry, <laughs> that was my fault. <laughs> when I was in a spelling bee, I lost on the word arduous. I'm still not sure how to spell it, but now I know what it means. I know this water is not good. It looks okay, but it's not okay. 
the little health clinic we went to today averages 10 kids a day. And this water is a big part <laughs> of the reason they go. So we brought a scale along so we can weigh these. Oh, that is so heavy. <laughs> can you read the scale? 57 for the big one, 57 pounds. And the little one, oh, it's so light. 15 pounds for the little one. So 57 plus 13 is 70 pounds. So now for the hard part. Christina and Sabina are going to oh, teach me to put this on my back and carry it the two miles home. That was awful. And the worst part of it is I have a huge audience watching me. Okay, this is, I gotta say a little prayer first. Okay, this, to the side. To the side. To the knees. To the knees, then up. Okay, I can't really get to the knees. This is too heavy to really get to the knees. Oh, okay, to the knees. I'm on the knees. Okay, then the up part. So I get up now. Yes, I mean it. Oh. Oh. Up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a Russian weightlifter. Mm -hmm. All right, then what do we do? We put that one on here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's 70 pounds. That's 70 pounds. It's 3.55 and I've just started and I'm already tired. The straps are digging into my shoulders. I think this will be the longest hour of my life. I'll just stand here for just a second. <laughs> just a second. I'll just rest for one second. I know we're not to the resting place yet. <sighs> I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can't go to the dentist, but I can do this. Okay, let's go. Oh. One thing the lady said to me is they hate how they get backaches when they do this. They say the pain just builds and builds as they go and go. And it takes a while for their back to stop aching when they get home. I can feel it. I can feel my back aching. Oops. Except we just started. Oh, thank you so much. Christina got me some kindling to use as a walking stick, which is nice. I feel like Moses now with the Red Sea on my back. Sabina makes this trip twice a day. She uses about 13 gallons a day. That's for everything. Cooking, cleaning, drinking, bathing. So in this trip, I'm carrying half of the water she'll use today. One of the most poignant stories Sabina told me was how she had seen running water once in her life. It was three years ago. It was in a place called Leilan, which has water, it has springs, and people have water right in their yards. And she went from house to house to see this incredible sight, this water that came right from a tap that she didn't have to get from the river. And she said, I never knew that there were places that weren't like this. And once I was there, I didn't want to come back. I asked Sabina about her dreams for her children. And her dream is that they would all get an education. The education she never got because she had to fetch water. And then I asked her what her dream for herself is. 
And she said, I'd just like to be able to take a bath at my house. <laughs> no, the gate. I have to go across the gate because there's thorn bushes on either side. And as I'm going across the gate, I'm remembering <laughs> how Sabina went across this gate every day she was pregnant, including the day she gave birth. If she can do it nine months pregnant, I can do it at 47. Maybe. Robin, what up? What do we do? What up? You see her, I can do this. Ouch, ouch. Oh. Yeah, I can. Get out okay, right there. Oh, my foot doesn't really move like that. Okay, then then what do I do? Okay, that this leg has to. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then what? Can anyone down? Oh! 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 <laughs> yeah! Okay. <laughs> I did the gate! Thank you. I've always thought about water in terms of disease. How if you don't have water, or if you have bad water, you get sick and you can die. But I have a new understanding of water now. It's not just about disease. If you don't have water, it robs you of time. It robs you of education. Sabina didn't get to go to school. And now, because she has to go four hours every day to get this water, she doesn't have the time that she wants to spend with her family and do the things that she actually wants to do. Like plant a kitchen garden. And that doesn't seem too much to ask to me. So my wish for Sabina today is that water will come close to her so she won't be chained to that river anymore and she'll get back the time that she deserves and needs to have a full life. <laughs> Would you like some water? Ha 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 ha!